Good morning, YouTube. Here I have a cost guide for shooting 8x11 Minox format film. As you may or may not know, recently I got into some miniature photography. It has been a fantastic journey, and I have so much to share with you. So here we go, jumping straight to it as always. The first part of your cost equation is the camera itself. There are several different models of Minox cameras. I prefer the B models because of the lack of a battery. One will run you about a hundred and fifty dollars. Do keep in mind that these are vintage machines, and you should not presume it will work flawlessly, unless it is recently serviced. There are a couple gentlemen who still service them in twenty twenty three, and the most prominent one probably being the legendary Don Goldberg. If you are going to go this route, I strongly recommend doing it ASAP. There is no guarantee how long these old technicians will still be in the business, so if you're going to rehaul one, get it done quick. The cost for a complete service is about a hundred and fifty bucks. It's not cheap. The other part of your equation is the film and respective equipment for developing and scanning, if you choose to do it yourself. For the film. The only two ways to get fresh 8x11 format cassettes in 2023 is either buying them from Blue Moon Camera, who sells readily available cassettes for 36 exposures, around $22, or to cut your own film and load your own cassettes. There are several sources on eBay to buy pre-cut film from. They generally run about $6 for 50 exposures. A lot cheaper than preloaded cassettes, but it does not include the cassette itself. And loading the thing needs a lot of patience and practice. Also, keep in mind that most precut film I can find on eBay is black and white. So weigh your options and find the one that works best for you. For me, I'm definitely going the DIY route. I don't care about the quality or color of the final results as much. If I need a precise, quick, intelligent portrait of an important subject that I cannot afford to miss, my iPhone had been doing that reliably for decades. I mostly enjoy the process of shooting the photos and developing them. Something about it makes the moment feel significant, and not just like the thousands of moments that slipped quietly through our fingertips. As for developing, the original daylight developing tank and a set of color, as well as black and white developing powder from Sinsteel, ran me around two hundred dollars, with the tank being about one forty and the powder kit being sixty. If you wish to scan and digitalize the negatives yourself, you will also need an enlarger and a decent camera. This Minox original 8x11 negative viewer cost me thirty dollars. It enlarges the tiny negatives so I could take pictures of them with my smartphone. After that, all you need is a free app such as the Adobe Lightroom to invert the colors. For comparison. The cost for developing and scanning forty cassettes in a lab will be around three hundred dollars, and then you'll have to wait for shipping and such. There you have it—a non-comprehensive cost guide for shooting Minox sub miniature. The whole setup cost me about eight hundred bucks, which is not cheap at all. Which includes a serviced camera, two liters of solutions, and sixteen hundred shots of film. I can now shoot, develop, and digitalize my own negatives. The cost for hardware, aka you can keep and reuse, is around five hundred, and a, the occurring cost would be your chemistry and film. That depends on how often you shoot. Personally, I prefer to go the whole nine yards because of the process is what I truly enjoy the most. It's something modern humans don't really need to do. But grants a lot of joy and accomplishment. Well, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and go out, touch some grass, take some nice pictures. Have a good one. See you.